Are we rolling? Are we on? Hey, how you doing? On behalf of PB Alerts, providing you the alerts you can trust and the training you need, I'm John Zadar. Today I'm doing something a little unique. I normally just look at OTC stocks, penny stocks, but today I'm looking at a NASDAQ stock. Why? Well, honestly, I just got a passion for finding companies that are under the radar, that have a service or a product that is going to fill a niche perfectly and are probably going to explode within the next five years. And this is one of those companies. This is Beam. Beam Global has been around for 15 years. Their name used to be Envision Solar, if that gives you any clue, as if the picture down there didn't. <laughs> this is a leading provider of sustainable technology. They have an impressive patented list of products that generate electricity, store that electricity, and allow the customers to dispense the electricity for a multitude of applications including, as you would expect, EV charging, outdoor media, which I'll explain, and energy security, which has really been a strong surge for their business here recently. And something I want to say right now is that this company has not been advertising. They have been doing good business, and it has been picking up very strong right now, and all by word of mouth. But they do plan on going on to an advertising campaign, and I'm just excited to see how this does. Now, I want to start with this news press that came out for their fiscal quarter two 2021 financials because, well, really, it puts a lot of everything I could say in a very nice nutshell so bear with me here but all of this is juicy juicy information and then I'll expound on it and I'll show you why I'm excited about it because they've made some changes here just recently structurally engineeringly wise and they have made some advances into well I think areas other competitors have overlooked let's take a look so they have definitely had one heck of a good last quarter. Matter of fact, the last six months have been great. Recorded the highest second quarter revenue in the company's history. Right down here, they go on to even say we've had a record number of beam deliveries, record revenue, record pipeline, and the largest order to date. So they are just growing at an incredible rate right now. Uh, received the largest single order from California's Department of General Services for 52 systems. Uh, just a couple years ago, their largest order was 50 units from New York. Cloudy New York. That's right, they work great as long as there's daylight. It doesn't have to be sunlight, it has to be daylight. Huge difference. Uh, experienced an increase in orders from GSA and California contracts. GSA controls every single courthouse, every port uh, in California, all the federal buildings. So any, any cars, anything to do with them, they control. They're quite interested. Grew sales pipeline by 50%, went from 50 million to 75 million. Uh, executed deployments and orders during Q2 into California, Wisconsin, Georgia, Hawaii, New Mexico, New York, Pennsylvania. <sighs> South Carolina, Tennessee, and Washington. Oh, increased engagement and pipeline activity with utility companies and commercial real estate industries. You know, I, every single one of these bullets has a big picture behind it. Every single one of these groups are huge behind it, and they haven't even started advertising. This is word of mouth, and it is amazing when you see how versatile and more than that, how critical their equipment could be for us. I really love this. The EVM ARC, which is what they call that unit down there below me, transportable EV charging was featured for military and civilian use. Uh, let me see. Beam Global was added to the Russell 2000 index and negotiated into CE's clean transportation program up to 200 million in potential funding, grant entrance into CARBs, uh, program for 60 million of annual funding and they've just been issued another patent in China and then right down here they tell us that funding and interest activity at every level of government and also in the corporate enterprise arena is increasing and accelerating as it relates to Beam's products we are seeing larger orders and more of them 
for all the reasons that we have built our business around. People want and need rapidly deployed, scalable, lowest TCO, that is total cost of operation and highly resilient EV charging and emergency power infrastructure. This doesn't just get set up in months or weeks or even days. This is set up in minutes. The EVARC, which stands for Electric Vehicle Autonomous Renewable Charger, is a one-of-a-kind product. Truly, this company doesn't have any competitors. Yes, there are solar electric charging companies out there, but they all put their units in the ground. They found datum. You can't move them. This is a permanent device that can be moved. That's right. This doesn't get strapped to the ground, bolted. It doesn't get found dated. Nothing holds it but gravity. You can move it anytime you want. But in saying that, it does not move very easily. It has a 120 mile per hour wind rating, though it has been already proven to stand up to 185 mile per hour winds in the Caribbean and did not fall down. Was the only thing standing up and it was placed in grass. These can go on cement, sand, grass, wherever you need them. And they only take up a parking spot. The exact same size, just like a carport, except now you can charge. This is a fantastic product that has many other benefits that I'm going to cover here in just a second. It also comes with a free app, so you can find these locales and get topped up whenever you need to. When I said that the company has made engineering modifications to the ARC, that may have been an understatement. The fact of the matter is, they were a little bit, well, let's just say bulky and traditional looking. They were a genius concept from the very start, but their design and their engineering structurally, well, it was definitely lacking. Not so with the ARC 2020. Look at that baby, sleek. That is aesthetically pleasing to the eye. It is more practical and filled with new features as well. So we're taking a quick look at the modifications made to the ARC 2020. These are important modifications, not just for aesthetics and practicality, but they've added features that now make government departments and agencies, other countries, major corporations interested in buying loads of these. Now, the ARC 2020, not the previous versions. First thing you notice is that it's clean, right? They've gotten rid of all the bulk that was down here, the batteries, the chargers, the transformers, the computers, everything now is up top. The only thing you got down on the bottom is your dispensers. Now the company doesn't sell dispensers because they don't sell electricity. They're not in competition with the utility companies or the dispensing companies. They sell a product that makes electricity so they can sell it. So you go find the company you want to dispense and make money with. They'll install those for you and it will come pre-installed, ready to use as soon as they drop it off. The real important feature for practical purposes is their Envision Track. This has not only made it easy, you used to have to go out and loosen bolts and pivot your solar panel to catch the sun as it changed through the year. This automatically tracks the sun through the day. The efficiency and the amount of power it is now accumulating is much higher than it used to be. Speaking of much higher, even the batteries and the computers have been upgraded. The batteries now hold 12% more charge than they used to. The entire unit is beefier. And of course, you would presume that the solar panels would be updated too. And they are to some of the best in the world. These are coming from SunPower, an American company. They have been the number one consumer solar company in America for three years. Another great aspect of this is that not only does it pivot, because it has to pivot up here for the solar panel to follow the sun, but it also articulates down here. They actually unbolt this and put this down, and the solar panels pivot and fold on these dots so that you end up with something like that. And everything sits on the platform and is then trucked off to wherever they're going to go. Bend it back up, twist it, fold it, boom you're in business. Just that easy. Kind of like a mini transformer, isn't it? Now, something I want you to notice here. You see this? Let me see if I can zoom in there. Yeah, you see that platform. That is the platform they have made. This is a new platform. It had to be when they put all the weight up to the top. It changed the ballast 
Before, it was just a thick piece of flat iron. This does more than just weigh it down, though. You see the shape? You see how that's kind of like the top of a submarine, rounded on the top, but totally flat on the bottom? Well, there's a reason for that. You can get a better picture over here. This is before they paint it. You can see it's round. The reason for this is when the wind blows across it and goes across the top and down, the wind actually exerts a force down on top of this, pushing it to the ground. They had a wind rating of 120 miles per hour for this. It was in the Caribbean being used and they went through a hurricane and it stood up after 185 mile per hour winds. Is that not unbelievable or what? Now another fantastic feature is that it's flood resistant. All of this equipment has been moved up top so it's not going to get damaged and destroyed during a flood. And it can still be used. Now I know you're thinking, wait a minute, nine and a half feet, what am I supposed to drive my car at six foot and plug in underwater? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. It's the emergency power panel that is important. This can be used during, well, an emergency. The ARC's off-grid emergency power backup supply is what's catapulted its revenues in this last quarter and is going to continue catapulting their revenues, in my opinion, 10x at least in the next five years. This is appealing to municipalities, states, federal agencies. They want security. This is far beyond convenience. This is security. When there are blackouts or utility outages, it is convenient to have power. But when there are hurricanes or earthquakes or God forbid terrorist activities, it can be priceless. It can save lives. And this is portable power that can be moved wherever we need it to hospitals or shelters. As a matter of fact, some set these things up even in advance. Like in San Diego, they put one at a COVID center just in case. They've got a lot of ventilators there that they don't want shutting down. Now, Besides just putting it in the right place, way up high so it doesn't get flooded, they've added a lot of variety to the types of electricity, 6 kilowatts, 120, and 240, with all the various types of outlets you're going to need, including various ones like USB, so you can even charge phones and stuff. Very smart. And this is going to be the biggest selling feature of the ARC now. Now, just to give you an inclination how in demand these are by big corporations and municipalities, I found this list. Now, it is old. It's from 2016. It was from the city of San Diego. They wanted this company to list all the sales that they had done for some reason. And I've got that information here. Now, keep in mind, this is 2016 before they had the update to the 2020. Now, this is a list from California, it's from Sacramento, Fresno, Los Angeles, San Bernardino, Riverside. Each one of these offices were getting one each. Stockton, San Diego, Orange, each one of their districts getting one. The California Department of General Services got one. The Office of Inspector General got two. Uh, I found this interesting, the California State University got two EV arcs and the city of Shasta Lake got one. Now they mention other states. City of New York, one EV. Now we know just a couple years later, New York must have been sold on this concept because they bought 52 more. U.S. Department of Energy, two. U.S. Virgin Islands Department of Property and Procurement got one. City of Boulder got two. Now this is where it gets interesting. Google, at this point in time, has 22. Uh, Gentech has one, Johnson & Johnson has one, and Carlton Management has four. Gets better. Naval Base in San Diego has eight solar trees. Solar trees, these are five times bigger than the portable units that they have. I haven't even mentioned those. Look at them babies. Those are 35 feet by 35 feet, and they produce a lot more power, and they have the same emergency capacity. And these can be connected to the grid for a lot of trickle charges and stuff like that. These obviously are a lot more expensive. The small ones go for 60000 The big ones have to go for at least 200000 So when you see this, you've got to be amazed. University of California in San Diego bought a total of 43 solar trees. 
a university. Google bought 22 of the portables. Those are, well, back then they were $40,000. These solar trees are four or five times as much, and a university that doesn't make money bought them. Wow. San Diego Gas and Electric bought six solar trees. Friedmont Cadillac got one. This parking lot in San Diego has 25 solar trees, and the initial Brotherhood of Electrical Workers has one solar tree. So both the ARC 2020 and the solar tree are exactly the same in their features and benefits. The only difference between them, obviously, is their size. The solar tree is five times bigger and produces more power. And it is found dated. That is a permanent fixture where the other one is not. And the company feels between these two products, they can dominate the terrestrial vehicle charging market. Now they want your scooters, your motorcycles, your cars, your trucks, your vans, your semis, but they also want aviation. There is no infrastructure at the airports and they made this point clear by setting a new world record and headlines. The beautiful thing about this is the uh, Beam Global EV Arc that we're using to charge these, uh, charge the aircraft up on this trip was actually designed for charging electric cars. And what we're seeing now is this huge opportunity to leverage the investments that are being made in electrification of ground transportation and provide infrastructure to support electric aircraft, which as we see from this one behind us, they're here. And, they're, and more and more, there's hundreds of new designs that are coming into the marketplace over the next five years so we need the infrastructure to be in place to support their operations and it was that lack of infrastructure that stood out in the headlines with the world record being set they could have gone a lot further what stopped them no power they had to make numerous stops along this trip and they had to have one of beam globals power units at each place because there is nothing set up at any airport though you can go buy an electric airplane right now you're not going to be able to fly it anywhere because there's no infrastructure. And it is that lack of infrastructure that is hindering every EV sector, including drones. Drones are a huge booming sector and we don't know how big it's going to get and all that they're going to be able to do. What we do know is that they are limited. They can only go 15 miles before they need recharging and there are barely any recharging units for any of the tasks we need them to do. So this company is setting up units. Now, I don't know if this is a prototype or if this is the finished product. It's pretty unique. It looks like it belongs on the moon. Even looks like those legs might be able to walk, like it could move itself. In either case, we need these just like a car, like gas stations. You need so many of them down the road so that you can continue on with your journey and expedition. And that's what they're going to do. However, that's not the primary financial reason that they're doing it. It is the data. All of the data in the routing and delivery and even safety, which is a primary concern with drones, is the safety factor. We don't want them falling out of the sky or running into buildings, so they are constantly being monitored. And this information will be sent back to their customers and clients via the, the internet. And if I haven't mentioned it, all of their equipment, the ARC, the solar tree, this, they're all wirelessly connected so that information can move. And it is that information that's going to make them money. Companies want to know. Don't want lawsuits falling out of the sky every day, do you? <laughs> now, truth is, you're probably not going to get killed if one of these things hit you, but it would hurt, right? Now, there is one other product that they have that has not yet hit the market, and they are not the only ones working on it. Amazon has got one of these in the works, too. A lamp post, light post, recharging unit. They want to put rechargers on every single lamp post and light post, or maybe every other one, up and down our streets. Imagine that. The convenience of just parking your car and plugging it into a lamp post. No problems. The great thing about this product would be it would be another one of those that is mostly interested in by municipalities, state governments, federal governments, even other countries. And of course, it would be solar powered and could be connected to the grid if you wanted to add some trickle charge to it. Now, the last thing that I want to cover about this company is their outdoor media. Now, when I thought of outdoor media, I was thinking of billboards and how they would supply power to them so that they could run on natural power during the night than electricity. Well, that's not what they had in mind at all. 
No, their outdoor media is their advertising campaign and an advertising campaign for their clients. What they do is they basically loan a ARC 2020 to a company they're going to advertise for. They banner it out with the company's name and logos, put these units out, and give away the electricity for free. How about that? Everybody wins. The company gets to keep the unit but get paid for advertising. The company advertising gets all of the hoopla for giving away free electricity in the city. Lots of good words going on there. And the consumer gets to charge for free. Great concept. I love it. I think it's going to do really, really well. And finally, some of the numbers about the company. Uh, you can actually get some information about NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange stocks on the OTC market. This is a NASDAQ stock. Uh, ticker BEEM is currently at 29.52. Some say it's a little high, but I think it's going to go 10x in the next five years. So is it? Uh, you could probably get it at a better price, but at the current moment, it is at 29.52. Now, why I'm here is to show you the share count. This is impressive. This is a low float. This is a low outstanding share count. They have authorized shares of 490 million. That's how many they could put on the shelves, but they have only got just under 9 million shares on the market. Out of that 490, outstanding. And of that, about 8 million of it is in the float. 8 million float. Wow. Unbelievable low float. This is great. The other thing I want to show you while we're here is the financials. Now, before COVID, they were just getting going. They were just getting their motors running. They were doing about $1.4 to $2 million. Then in 2018, they kicked up really hard up to $6 million. And then through the pre-COVID, COVID years, they were doing about the same, about five, six million dollars a year, which isn't a whole heck of a lot. Then they made the modifications. Now, these modifications have not only kicked up the price of these units, making them more money, which is why they had record revenues, but it has made it more appealing. So they've had record sales, record orders. But what they've also had was an increase in expense. All of those New modifications to make the product better cost more. So they were down about a half a million dollars this last quarter. So it's understandable why they dipped, though it wasn't a huge dip. So in my opinion, Beam Global hasn't just turned the corner. They have covered their bases. They have got everything from the small and middle-sized businessman's needs covered up to major corporations, states, federal governments, and other countries. They're not just covering EV charging market. They are covering backup power market, which is a huge dominant market. I think larger than just charging cars myself. Now, I like their ingenuity going with the lamp posts. I think the drones is great. I think they're really covering their bases and we don't know how much further these EV chargings could go. You know, you got boats, you've got, I don't know what else you've got, but they're on the cusp of touching the bases and bringing the power to us rather than us going to them, which I think makes this a very appealing company at a very timely moment in our history where we are making this conversion from fossil fuels over to eco green friendly fuels. And let's face it, no utility bills with these. No utility bills. Wow. That's as close as you get to free energy. I've got a lot of faith in this company. It's a little dear right now, but I think in five years, this price is going to look minimal and we're going to wonder why we didn't jump on board. Such an obvious choice. I hope I've showed you something here today. Hope you've gotten some facts you weren't aware of. Remember, I don't cover it all. I'm not licensed, so please do your own DD. Jump into this, get as much facts as you can. Because remember, the more you know, the more you grow. See you, folks.